And it looks like Mike has some very special guests uh, uh, with him. When I talk to them, and they, they say they're disappoint, disappointed for being out of school right now. <laughs> so we appreciate the sacrifice that they're making. So Mike will turn the time to you. Thank you. really have appreciated the opportunity to be with you. Enjoyed last night here very much. Enjoyed meeting a few of you now, having some new conversations with you. Thank you for letting me be a part of your uh, of your conference. As you know, the Leader in Me um, is all about leaders. And leaders aren't positions, right? They're not um, defined by how tall you are, how well you speak. Leadership is a choice. And because we all choose, right? We can choose to be leaders. We all can be leaders. And I've got three amazing leaders here today that I can't wait to introduce you to. They're from Cary School, and uh, they've each prepared some thoughts on leadership. We are first going to hear from the amazing and the wonderful Whitney Dredge, who's in second grade at Cary. After Whitney, we'll hear from the remarkable, the handsome, the outstanding. <laughs> Dallin, and your last name real quick. Park, I got, I got nervous. And then we will hear from the 2013-14 student body president at Cary School, the lovely and amazing Lily Rivera. So let's turn the time over to and give a warm round of applause to with, with
youngest in my family, but I still feel like I'm a pretty good leader to my older siblings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a son the student body president of my high school this year, and it's been a really great, uh, great opportunity that I've had. Uh, the Seven Habits Leader in Me program was brought to my school when I was a freshman. And since then, I've noticed some big changes in our, in our student body. Uh, for one, the, the kids are, have a lot more responsibility placed on them. Um, and at first, we were kind of shy towards this because it's scary. But the more we did it, the more we realized the more freedoms we have. Um, people look up to us, and they can trust us to do more things. And it's just it's great. Um, everything that we do uh, revolves around the Leader in Me program. Um, I've had a lot of experience as a student body president. I have to practice these leadership skills every day. And um, I tend to look to them for help a lot of the time. And uh, sometimes even I have to think back on my day and think where I've been a leader and what I have done right. And uh, I'm just really grateful that I have these tools to use. And I know that they can help anyone who chooses to use them as well. So. so much for being here. Let me ask you, why did you feel impressed to run for student body president? Um, well, I wanted to make a difference within my school. That sounds cheesy, but it is true. <laughs> uh, and I knew that um, being a leader, I can influence uh, the younger kids uh, to do the good things that uh, they can do and um, inspire those around me and uh, make a difference, I guess. <laughs> it is nice to meet you. And I can tell why the student body at Cary would vote for you, right? Just absolutely no question there. Oh, someone has a question. Yeah. Thank you, buddy, for letting me know. Yeah. So what, what single quality do you, do you look forward look for as a high school principal? What do you want your high school principal to look like? Um, I think the high school principal definitely needs to be involved with the students. Um, uh, the uh, principals are intimidating anyway, I mean, <laughs> right? Uh, so they need to get out there and talk to the kids, uh, be involved with them, joke with them, laugh with them, be strict, uh, know where uh, the line is between being the fun principal and being the principal that needs to um, have authority over your kids. So just get involved. <laughs> Any other questions for me? We've got one in the back. What are your plans after high school? Well, I plan on going to college. Um, I mean, I applied just recently. I turned in my application to uh, BYU Provo over in Utah. And it's, uh, it's a pretty competitive school, so I'm really hoping that I can uh, get my GPA up and get my grades up and hopefully head over there. I want to major in athletic training. Um, and I definitely want to get involved in the student government there at BYU, so we'll see how it goes. Hey, last question if I can. Do you feel like um, being at Cary School, where leadership is the theme, right, has helped you in your confidence as a leader and in your skills as a leader? Tell me a little bit about that. Um, definitely, like I mentioned, the teachers, uh, since we got this program, this Leader in Me program, have put a lot more responsibility on the students. And this is kind of annoying at first. Like, <laughs> you're here to teach us. Like, why, why do we have to do these things? But um, it, was, it was a good, good thing. And uh, I feel like since we've gotten the, the Leader in Me program, a lot, of, a lot of people, even those quiet kids, have stepped up and have become leaders and have just shown that everyone has something to offer. And um, like Mike said earlier, it's a choice. If you want to be a leader, you can be. Um, it's, it's all about you and, and helping others, so it's a choice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, the longer I'm up here, the more I'll ruin it, so I'll be quick. I, uh, I wanted to share with you three words and three of my favorite quotes to go along with those three words. And then I'm going to turn the time over to Principal John Carey, John Peck at Carey School. Uh, <laughs> First word, mindset. Mindset, tool set, skill set. First mindset. How we see kids is a reflection of who we are. If we see them as an obstacle, as a label, 
it says everything about how we treat them. If we see them as a leader, if we see them with potential to be uniquely great in this world, to lead their own life, and be good at whatever gifts and talents and abilities they've been given to be good at, we will treat them differently. We will allow them the wings and the roots they need. It's a mindset. This is from Stephen Covey, a quote that goes along with it. When literally hundreds of students arrive each morning like a giant wave, or when they depart in mass like the tide going out, right? All the school buses, everyone coming in and leaving. It must be difficult for educators to always keep in mind that ultimately, in the final analysis, every child is a one. A unique spirit with gifts. Every child is a one. And lest anyone forget every teacher and administrator is also ultimately a one. Everyone here is ultimately a one. Having their own peculiar package of experiences and talents. What greater contribution then can an individual teacher, administrator make than to enable an individual child to successfully lead his or her own life and to maturely respond to life challenges. That's the mindset we need. And we're looking for a few schools to have that mindset and would like to come along. Toolset, the 25th anniversary of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is coming out this coming year, 2014. And it has a new foreword by Jim Collins uh, from Good to Great, right? And uh, Frank McCovey is very pleased and honored that uh, Jim Collins would write the foreword for the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And when we talk about the tools we need to succeed, this is what Jim Collins has to say in the foreword. He said, prior to Apple or Microsoft, few people could harness computers to their daily lives. There were no mouse pointers from the icons or overlapping windows on a screen, let alone a touch screen. We could all pull out our touch phones for right now. But with the Macintosh and then Windows, the mass of people could finally tap the power of the microchip behind the screen. Finally tap the power. Similarly, there had been hundreds of years of accumulated wisdom about personal effectiveness from Benjamin Franklin to Peter Drucker, but it was never assembled into one coherent, user-friendly framework. If we were to take all the self-help books that have ever been written the last 200 years, how would you sort them and organize them in the library? Would you have marriage counseling? Where would that one go? Personal fitness, where would that one go? Where would dieting go? Where would time management go? Can we organize all of these in a systematic way? Covey created a standard operating system, the windows for personal effectiveness, and he made it easy to use. Seven habits, seven categories, and kids can understand it real fast. I was at A.J. Winters in Montpelier last Friday, talking with the principal there. I said, how did the leader and me come to Montpelier? She said, my grandson, a kindergartner, was at his home, given an assignment by his mom to pick up the room before they went outside to play, and he's telling his little sister, okay, we can do this, let's synergize. You put all this in the closet there, I'll start making the bed, and we'll get out of here twice as fast. Mom starts scratching her head. He starts using thing, terms like think, win, win around the table, and he was in kindergarten. And that was when the principal learning that about her grandson said that the kindergartner can understand this operating system for effectiveness, anybody can. And thanks to that little guy up in Washington, we have one more amazing, amazing school at Mount Pilgrim. All right, last word, skill set. We need practice. 
You can't just give a man a fish. You can't give little Whitley a fish, right? We need to give her an opportunity to fish for herself. She needs practice. She needs opportunities. Few things help an individual more than to place responsibility upon him and to let him know that you trust him. Would you agree with that, Lily? Absolutely. Look at all the opportunities you've been given. Whether you want it or not, they're teaching you how to fish. Skill set, practice, mindset, believe. See kids differently. We've got the tool set. We've got the Windows operating system. And then we just give them opportunities. Before I turn the time over to John, let me just say that we are looking for schools that are interested in letting go of a little of their control and a little of their traditions and trying something different. We have been able to find resources in almost every case in Idaho for the leader and me to be in. 100 new schools across the country will be implementing the leader and me where most of the funding came from outside businesses that are committed to what is happening. If you believe what we're saying is the right way to see kids, then let's worry about how we're going to find the funding for you a different time. Let's just get you started now. I want to find it. All right. Um, I'd like to introduce John Peck, one of our fine examples of Leader Me School here. One of two lighthouse schools that we have of Leader Me Schools. And he's going to talk just a little bit about the difference that they made at, uh, at Cary. And I will, uh, I'll just, I'll bring it back right after that and just say a, a last little goodbye. So thanks. Okay, very quickly, um, <clears throat> he just asked me to kind of share with you a little bit about Four years ago when we had the opportunity to be, uh, Dr. Barber said, are you interested in this? Tom Bailey and I said, absolutely, let's do it. Because we were, we were kind of all over the place. And I don't know what your school is like, but we had character counts, and we had tribes, and we had a lot of stuff, and we had nothing. And we were kind of all over the place. And so I was thinking, what a great way. And that was one of the best things about it, was we all got the same training. Our bus drivers, our custodians, secondary, elementary, everybody got the same seven habits training and then the implementation for the leader and me training. So we all had the same language and it, and it worked very well um, and, and still does. This is our fourth year. Um, we, we enjoy every opportunity we have for them to practice their leadership skills. Um, the, the bottom line for me is myself, I'm a better principal when I live the seven habits. And teachers are better teachers when they live the seven habits. And students are better students. And parents are better parents when they live the seven habits. We, we had an opportunity to um, give each of the families a book. Each family got the seven habits of highly effective teens book. Um, that book is not, not real expensive. It'd be an easy read and an easy uh, book study for a school. Um, when, when he was, you were talking about the, the students saying stuff at home, um, when we first implemented this, probably halfway through the year, I had two teenage boys. One was a senior, one was a freshman. Um, I was in on the computer in the, in the kitchen. My wife is in there trying to fix dinner. And then I start hearing things like, come on, Mom, we've got to look win-win on this situation. We've got to be proactive towards this. And they start using those words to her to try to convince her to do whatever she, they wanted to do. She looks at me and she goes, really? <laughs> like, I guess so. I guess really. Um, we, uh, it, you're, you're welcome to come to our school anytime. Uh, we have an open door. Anybody can come visit anytime. You can see how it works. Um, we're, we're by far not a perfect school. The year that we implemented it was the best and the worst year. Um, we implemented the program. We had our accident with driver's ed. 
Um, three weeks later, we won the football championship. Like a month later, we had a parent that died in a, the uh, gas explosion in Peekaboo. A month later, we won first time ever the state championship in basketball. Uh, first time ever. So we had a, a real roller coaster of a year, but it really pulled everybody together and uh, made it made it a year that we could all get through. Um, it's a it's a great program. It works really well for us. If you have any questions or or you want to come and see how it looks or how it is in the secondary, and we we really kind of struggled with secondary. Um, we put <laughs> the first year. That, that's another thing that was really amazing is <clears throat> we have we have let's see let me say this politically correct the mature staff. Um, <laughs> but but those teachers when we got the training they were the ones that were most excited about it they were the ones that wanted to teach this stuff that has not been taught to students for a long time stuff that was there when they were in school and hasn't been there so much and and they were the ones saying we've got to do this first year we talked to secondary um, <clears throat> every 20 minutes for every week and we thought that was too much the next year we did 20 minutes once a month and that was not enough the next year um, the elementary one of the elementary teachers had a great idea and that was to have the secondary students teach the elementary students so we had them the secondary students go and teach the elementary this morning we did that the first time this year they taught habit one <clears throat> Lily and the seniors Lily was even one that was teaching taught the sixth graders habit one and, and amazing discussions, amazing preparation. The kids, the kids do a great job, and they learn them better than if we were trying to teach them. Um, I know Cary is kind of a unique place with preschool through 12, but but it works very well. Anyone's welcome to come anytime. If you have questions, please call um, Nancy Durchie, our secretary in elementary, does a wonderful job. What, what Whitley was talking about was they <clears throat> the first. At the beginning, they came up with the jobs, like her recycle leader and her mail leader and the note leader and the PE leader. And then they apply for them, and she has an application, and then she interviews them. And then she tells them if they got the job or not. And then she schedules when they have that job for the two weeks that they have that job, and she's scheduled up quite a ways right now. But the kids do them. They're, they're, we try to have leadership roles for every student, um, and it just works very well. Thank you. Hey, uh, real quick, there is a card on your table. If you want more information, I'd be happy to send you some more information. Um, I'd actually be happy to send that little PowerPoint that we talked about last night. If you'll just give me an email or something, I'll just send it off to you. It'd be my pleasure. Um, I'm here and available uh, to get in touch with you as you'd like. I'd like to just conclude with one little story, and then we'll wrap it up. I was out in a little small town, uh, similar to one in Idaho, out in Washington, Saddle Mountain, not too far from Wenatchee. And they were in a training over the summer, and a parent was at the training. She wanted to learn more. It was a full seven habits of highly effective people training, three days worth for their entire faculty. And this parent came to me and said, I have to tell you why I'm here. Because I saw a difference that this was making in my son, and I started to really take notice. She said, my son, I will be the first to admit, was the one that would absolutely flop all over the floor, yell and scream and pout and moan if I asked him to do even the smallest thing like make his bed or take the dirty dishes over to the kitchen table, the sink. She said, and I noticed some things happening where he wasn't acting that way as much or as often. But she said, here was the kicker. This was the day when I realized there was amazing things happening here. She said, my mother came to visit us at our house, and he was in one of his moods, and he wasn't up to any good, and he was really whining and complaining, and grandma said, so-and-so, let's go out and do something right now. Why don't we go out and wash the windows, and here's your little squirt bottle, and here's your paper towels, and let's get busy. And of course, that was the last thing he wanted to do, and he's outside, and he's not wanting to wash the windows, and he's flipping the little squirt bottle with his finger, and he's not getting around to, you know, doing any of this. And grandma is watching him misbehaving, but he doesn't see that she's there. And this little guy starts to talk to himself and says, 
what are you doing? You're a leader, and leaders don't act that way. He grabbed his little squirt bottle, and he started wiping his windows down. And Grandma, with her chin up, dropped, walked into the house, and said, let me just tell you what I saw. I saw your son pull himself up from the bootstraps and take charge of his own life and be a leader. Every kid can do it because leadership is a choice. Let's help your kids be leaders. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming from Kerry. Long ways. <laughs> you guys did a great job. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon, everyone.